It, it is a terrible double standard. Solar panels are bad because they come from China. Nuclear waste is good because it comes from Japan. It's crazy. I'm very happy that today you came. That's very good. Please let me play that part again. The main source of your information that they get these stories from. The media's main source of information is a man named Adrian Sims. Could you please introduce yourself briefly? Um, how long have you been living in China, and uh, what makes you stay? I've been in China since uh, May 2014, so seven years nearly now. And uh, I live in Guilin. I'm, I'm a, a writer, a lecturer. I've done many things in, in business in the past, uh, including much, much work in the media. And um, what makes me stay in China is that I love China. Uh, it, I consider it to be my home. I love the people. And uh, yeah, it, to me, China is home. As far as I know, were you once a journalist before? I, I worked for Britain's largest circulation daily newspaper for six years, and I have had many roles in the media, yes. You got famous because uh, your video has been uh, broadcasted in a press conference of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and it's discussed yeah. over a conversation uh, by Hua Chunying and a foreign journalist. So you've been producing videos yes. about um, how the West stigmatizes China. Could you share your points with us? I came to realize during, I guess, 2019, how unfair the West was treating China, how unfairly represented China was being in, in the world media. And especially with the Hong Kong thing, and it was terrible to me. And so I started to speak out. I have always spoken out against what I see as hypocrisy of the Western media. I, it, it, when, I, when I was in England, I did this. So this is not some, something I've just started since I've been in China. But, but now I consider China my home, and I love China, and, and I, I will speak out for China. There's so much stigmatization of China. It, it is a war against China in the media. So what's your view on the recent uh, Xinjiang cotton issues? My view is that they, they have tried to attack China and Xinjiang, and indeed they, ha they have attacked Uyghur people because this is a big trade, this is a big industry in, in Xinjiang. Uh, slave labor, forced labor, then it becomes coerced labor, and the language changes, it becomes diluted. Um, because when they realize that, they're, that well, they know they're wrong in the first place, but when, when it is pointed out that they have no evidence of this, they dilute their language. And of course, you and I and, and everyone in China knows that this, this is a lie. This is that they're, they're slandering and they are smearing China. I've just made a video uh, about this. Uh, as you said, Hua Chunying very eloquently and very elegantly slapped the BBC down. And, and it was wonderful to watch this. And I was very honored that she used my video to, in order to help with this um, remonstrating with the BBC. And the BBC have backed off now and, and Bloomberg have stepped into their place, if you like. And Bloomberg are doing now, they're trying to say that from they've gone from tainted cotton to tainted solar panels. Again, they're coming out with these allegations, and I have taken Bloomberg to pieces on this. So this is the latest one. They, they get disproved on something, they get, they get shown that they are lying publicly, and then they change tack. They move on to another subject. So it seems they have a certain agenda of uh, stigmatizing uh, China. Absolutely, there is an agenda. It, it is a hybrid war against China, and, and we've seen this in the trade and the sanctions and unfair sanctions. They cannot attack China militarily, so they are trying everything else to do this. And it is centered on the Belt and Road Initiative, One Belt, One, one Road. They can't control this, and they're jealous of it. You see, you have two mentalities here. The Chinese mentality is, let, let's work in cooperation, let's have a win-win. The Western imperial-based powers don't have this mentality. So anything they can't control, they attack. Japanese government recently decided to uh, start releasing treated radioactive water from the wrecked Fukushima nuclear plant into the Pacific Ocean in two years. So it's an option fearlessly opposed by fishermen, residents, and Japan's neighbors. However, we haven't heard much opposed from the West. 
Do you think this is double standard? It, it is a terrible double standard. America, was, America is built on a double standard. America was, was created by, by slave owners who wanted to be free. <laughs> so there has always been a double standard. And uh, it is hypocrisy of the, of the worst order. At the same time that, they're, that, they're, that, that the US and, and everybody else is saying, well, this is okay. Mm -hmm. At the same time they're doing this, they're attacking China. Solar panels are bad because they come from China. Nuclear waste is good because it comes from Japan. It's crazy. Yeah, it's just very ridiculous. So let's um, get back to China because this year marks the uh, 100 uh, anniversary of the CPC. Yeah. So what is your view mm. on the CPC and China under its lead? Do you think it best suits China and why? Well, my, my knowledge of Chinese politics is very limited. I'm, 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 I'm a Westerner, and, and, but I can tell you what I see and what I experience. Mm -hmm. And in truth, I, I see the fact that actually this might come as a revelation to people, but I see China as more de democratic than the West. I see the Chinese government, the, the CPC, the Chinese Communist Party, it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's an administration by the people and for the people. There are mechanisms for people to complain, to voice their opinion. People are heard. These things are carried forward into two sessions. And these things are discussed and it is always for and by the people this is a stark contrast to to western governments let's take america for example where where everything is controlled by money and lobbyists and and, and the money that pours into the government controls the government recently china have shown that the money does not control the government they, they gave jack ma a slap they said hey jack we, we're not sure about what you're doing and as big as Jack Ma is, and as admirable a person as he might be, he's achieved a lot. Mm -hmm. He's not bigger than the government. The money isn't bigger than the government. And I see, I see people happy. In seven years, I see happy people. I see contented people. I see people, a country with a, a mechanism to speak to, to the government, and the government listens. So if you ask me, does Chinese communism work? Chinese communism with socialist characteristics. Does it work? Yes, it does. And you look at the pace of change. You look at how things happen in China. It works. The, 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 the development in China that I've seen in seven years is incredible. So as someone who works and lives in China for about seven years so far, um, do you feel the change in the development of China? And could you share your experience with us? For example, I lecture for uh, what was in 2015 a small university, a rural university, which is Guilin University of Aerospace Technology. We nestled in the mountains just outside Guilin. In the past four or five years, I have seen such a huge change just in our small... We were a technical college and now we, we've achieved university status and the growth is phenomenal. I can, I can walk down a street in Guilin and two weeks later I can go down the same street and there's a new building. And I, where did that come from? <laughs> it's like, I, I swear there are building fairies in China that just kind of magic things out of thin air. The pace of change is incredible. You look at the infrastructure, you look at the high speed rail network, you look at the incredible um, engineering things that China have done, these incredible bridges across the sea through mountains. These things aren't happening anywhere else. At last, I'm just very curious myself that why um, did you choose Guilin, Guangxi to settle down among like so many cities in China? I think uh, my age has something to do with this. Um, and I like I like the busyness of a city, but I, I I also value quality of life. And Guilin is one of many many places in in China where 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 nature works very much in tune with with the people there. There is a balance. It's very beautiful. I have a very strong connection with nature personally, and so I made the choice of of a quality of life over high salary. 